Garish Ape, real name, no gimmicks. No crazy mom, 1195, 1195, 1195. 1195? You can't afford 1195? What's your problem? Officer Sanders called me a pedophile, me a pedophile, me a pedophile. Now that I know that she's into pedophilia, I will mark that name. Oh, oh, no, no, you said it. Look who's back, 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 back again. Dave is back, back, back. Tell the dead, stay. Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Out my back, out my back. Big store sack, big store sack. Guess who's back? Tee, all right, now, guys, here's the thing. I don't have any sponsors, cause nobody wants to see me. You should know more, so I'll just back up a phone and twitch that money. When you took the king, this is what I'll get. I had you want to see me, cause when they saw it, it's a friend, and he's gonna uncare my pants. Look with the bill, when she gets bills at the hospital, by the doctor, while well, I'm on your food complaining. And I'm rocking at the support, I am not upset. Dread! You waited so long to stop the rain, cause I'm back from my household being operated. Don't worry how my health's curated, it's the guy whose dick can be the herniated. FGC has left me beat me, chef, boy, I'd be fucking lucky. If you shut me down on Twitch TV, you know, you get bitches without me. So, that's some tips, that's now quick. Fuck this. Smack my lips, generate quick. Get ready. It's gonna try and upsell me. I just learned a brand new fact. Thank you, Derek. Who's my full bags out? We're not doing so, everybody. Keep crowdfunding. You lost me sandwiches. I will not eat. And I make more money than LTG. I fuck that Comcast and play you. Ryan is a slayer. Oh, oh, I see. For my alcoholic down Chateau Tree. You don't feel meaningful without me. Feel it in my pockets. I feel it in my tips. I need more a kid that can beside me in everything I do. It's written in the news. Be smart and got you eating. If this chill vibes are in you, come on and let money go. Money, money, go. No, I love those tips, I always will. It's always in the back of my head, way that I feel. Cause on the SP game you can super however you like Like and thanks Super chat, super stickers, membership, gift membership and tips Somebody that being said, 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 Hello, hello, this is Phil. Bill Burnett, all right, and um, just wanted to tell you that I love the podcast. That being said, big ups. That being said, which vest is podcast vest? That being said, relaxing, chill, interactive, fun. That being said, which vest is podcast vest? That being said, relaxing, chill, interactive. A L T Insight, the legend. Fantastic, Mr. Sam. The dentist. Steve to the dead. Psychological style. Get yeah, well soon, man. Me or cat. Artistic style. Tap being said. Which vest is podcast best? Tap being said. Which vest is podcast best? If there was ever meaningful content, it's being produced right here on That Being Said. Live. Are we live?
I think we are. Hey. Say something, you guys. Let's start laughing. Are we live? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jay. What's up, man? Oh, hey, Jay. Hey, Derek. Second out, everybody. All right, we're here. That being said, in the house, we got legends lined up. We got Meerkat behind the controls. It's a whole new world, brother. Whole new world. Whole new world. And we're here to have some fun. Let me introduce the legends around the panel. We have British style host. Our British style hosts were going low. So I had to refill for this week. The one, the only, Super Scuffer. Hello. <laughs> God damn it. It's the best 15 it's pounds I've ever spent. <laughs> it works. Big up, sir. Wake up. So what, how are you feeling, Super Scuffer? Let everybody know. Come on. I'm all good in the hood. Nice to see you. Uh, it's midnight. It's always midnight. This is right here, and your left ear, because I'm in mono. Hell yeah. Also, we got the cerebral style host in the house of a different country style, not British style. I'm not even sure what country style. You know, you don't have to reveal. Don't have docu don't, yeah, I, we don't have to get answer that. You don't have to answer that, Baxter. You don't have to answer that. Baxter in the house, my friend. How you feeling, my friend? Yeah, man, I'm feeling right, good. Thanks for having me back on. Let's get into yes. this. Yes, definitely. And, of course... The man behind the controls, Meerkat Mob. How you feeling, my friend? Um, I'm feeling great, dude. I've never had a stream before, so it's it's something very innovative that we're doing here today. <laughs> we're going uh, above and beyond. Hopefully, it's not too terrible, but it's gonna get better. I promise. Yeah. So yeah, let's uh, let's get into it. We got some some issues during the intro. I think I managed to handle them then. So now that we start talking about stuff, uh, it should be fine. All right. And that, with that being said, let's get to the business style announcements. I think you still have to handle the business style announcements since you're the producer, right? Yeah, we haven't quite settled the final contracts yet, so we don't really know uh -huh. who does what. Uh, so business <laughs> stuff. The King of the Ring finals are happening two weeks from now. That's the fourth, the Thursday, fourth of April, and um, the deadline for the submissions is probably around the third, so we can have time yeah. to gather everybody. And uh, the winner is going to be determined through basically viewer voting you're gonna have a couple of days from the fourth to the seventh to vote for your favorite entry and the viewers get to decide who wins a hundred what was it 122 dollars at this point uh 120 a, a, yeah something like that a curated game from a list of of your choosing basically well you, you get provided with the list you get to pick and um a merch item of your choice and then you get to flex on everybody that you won this very obscure internet song competition Yes, and you can ask Lemtex how his life has changed in so many countless ways. Um, everything has gone up in terms of he, he can't go down the street without getting recognized. Any club he walks into, he's getting laid about four times every night. So it's just going great for him, and it will go great for the next winner as well. Uh, so yeah, get your songs in by the 3rd, April 3rd. So that's a little bit less than two weeks from now. So the actual ka will be two weeks from this date right now. Yep. So you have two weeks, a uh, little bit less than two weeks for your next song, my friends. It's very okay. high quality, isn't it? It's very high quality this year. Super Scuffer, you are so close. You are the 11th finalist. <laughs> How do you feel to be so close to the, dr the dream world, but not quite getting there? The dream land, I should say. Uh, like the rock, people's champion, probably, something like that. Yeah. It's, ah. it's fine. It's fine. It's <laughs> always next year. Um, I do think, though, it was a really high quality, like, you know, the level of uh, commitment and uh, creativity in the detracts community is wonderful, isn't it? So I wanted to mm -hmm. shout out Brooke Barock as well, who I thought put loads of effort in and did a really good one. So, yes, yeah. a lot of creativity in that one. That takes some. That takes some guts, you know. That was so out of the box, but it really works well. And like I said earlier, before you started, if we could hear the songs like two or three times, like I feel much differently about a lot of them. And some yeah. of them really like clicked, you know, like holy shit, this is really good. But all the songs <laughs> are awesome. That's because you do spend your life listening to them over and over again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you so much. Anyways. Uh, I, I do have yes. a, a quick, very positive announcement. I am working in collaboration with a couple of the finalists on a song that I, I truly very much enjoy working on. It's probably one of my favorite things that I, I'm ever planning on putting on the internet. Ooh. They did a fantastic job and we're still waiting for some people and their ideas. It is going to be outstanding. I can't wait for everybody to see it. Very massive positive announcement. And I have another one. We didn't get a Lemtech song for round one, but he has promised a Lemtech song for the finals. And he said there might even be two Lemtech songs for the finals. 
So uh, it should be hype. It should be very, very hype when that day comes. Audience is getting spoiled. Uh, yes, we are. Yes, we are. And WPIG is getting spoiled as well. That's the best part. <laughs> That's the best part. Okay, anyways, let's get to, please, Meerkat, could you please have to get the video up i uh suggested to us wait wait this you, one is great you Go said ahead. you pause it when i start talking but i've just i've got to start talking immediately because the pizza and hat combo pizza t-shirt hat combo <laughs> oh what's wrong with that it's great there we go yeah so this is uh this is something that alt wanted to show us he gave us this timestamp, and there's another one we're gonna jump to later uh, that's so yes. a great one let's uh, uh -huh. let's get so this, right into this yeah yeah i yeah, no setup needed just play the first one things about lions and let me tell you something lions are not nice creatures holy shit hold on hold on hold on yeah, yeah go back a little bit we missed the beginning Yo, the, the yeah. god and you were servitude to god and that's your whole life i certainly would, could never choose that because i'm not a strong enough person to abstain from sex my whole life i don't know right, how just, on just ignore that we're getting to a different part but she did but anyway he I did remember abstain from sex for his whole life Yes. And as I've said, like all the time with Panda. <laughs> no, yeah, every, every, yeah. This was we're talking about his uh school days, just that that's the only setup you know. <laughs> okay. And remember, <laughs> remember, he's talking about he's gonna tell you. Just play it, Meerkat. No no talk up. Fuck talk up. Some things that that in particular that stood out for that year, sixth grade. I remember there was a all right, science sixth grade. fair. Keep that in your mind. And for the science How old fair. That? Sixth, grade, grade. sixth grade would be about um twelve years old. I'd say right. 12, 13 ish. Yeah. And so Citadel miniatures and just graduating into like liking a bit of cool music and thinking about girls, maybe. Right. Yeah. 12, 13 is where that's the, that's what I think mm. I want to point out. That's where it clicked. You know, you start saying, Oh, I kind of like, you know, no cooties, boobies. You know what I'm saying? Not yet, but you're thinking about it. But yeah, go um, ahead, please. You might still be playing Dungeons and Dragons, but like you might have your eye on the sexy elf. Yeah, exactly. You start <laughs> taking it to your bed with you. No, it's all right. That's just. <laughs> Come infatuated with the Lion King, ladies and gentlemen. The Lion King at the time had come out. It was the biggest fucking movie ever. The most highest grossing animated movie ever made. I went and saw it three times in the theaters. I bought the soundtrack. I sang. I played the video games. I had the t-shirts. I had a mug that was the Lion King. I had all the Lion King toys from Burger King. I had Lion King underpants. I had Lion King toilet paper. Everything was motherfucking Lion King. All right, pause, please. That Think about this, guys. All right. This is what I was so shocking to me. Like it's cool to like Lion King. <laughs> totally cool. I mean, just, that's you do you. A twelve years old. Lion King pajamas. Lion King bed. Okay, Seeing Lion King in the theaters three uh, times. Lion King is, is that epic. Not, it's not, we're not talking about like the minions dude, yeah. here. We're talking about Lion King. It's a classic. <laughs> yeah. When you're twelve years old, guys. Come and on. also, mommy would have to go and get that bedspread for him and the lunchbox. And while they're going around the supermarket, he's going to be saying, oh, I want the Lion King cereal. Surely at this point, he was obsessed with it in some way. It's it's pretty for me. For, for me, it's kind of like at 12 years old, I'm not interested in getting pajamas of a Disney movie. <laughs> uh, kind of, yeah. you, you know, am I crazy for that? I, I don't I, know. And some people are just <laughs> twelve. You, you're still pretty much a kid at twelve. And in kids 12, back then, nice. I guess I, I I don't see anything too crazy with that. I don't know okay, if you okay. talked about it. If I'd have talked about it at school and like you know brought my Lion King pencil case, I think I would have heard about it until I graduated high school. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying he should. It's like the worst thing of all time. I'm just saying that it is kind of telling. It makes sense with someone of his social, uh, excuse me, maturity level, right? I think yeah. we can see how this makes sense uh, in terms of the whole storyline of DSP. Uh, but don't worry, I'm not done. Please play the other uh, timestamp, please, Beercat. <laughs> yep. So that was at one... So what was your favorite movie when you were 12 years old? I, 12 years old? I was watching, you know, funny movies at least. What came out when I was 12 years old? That was like the year 2000. Like the, the Three so... Stooges or something? <laughs> okay, so I was oh, 12. On. That's 98, 99. All right. I was watching like, um, I don't know, Black Snake Moan and stuff. Jurassic Park. Yeah. Jurassic right, Park. <laughs> yeah, Jurassic Park. That's a great 12 year old movie. And that's even then I wouldn't think about getting the fucking pajama set. <laughs> I'm not wearing pajamas at 12. The Sonic hat. Come on. All right. Go ahead. Sorry. That I'll Keep... tell you, which was kind of funny. Was, it's kind of it was funny about, remember that. I'd say between 6th to 8th grade. You know, this is the time 
when the guys are starting to little beef up a little bit. They're starting to get more masculine. Some of them are getting facial hair. I incidentally, in sixth to seventh grade, started growing my mustache. That's when I started growing it for the first time. Um, the girls, yeah, they start to get titties and they start to get a little, you know, they look more feminine, more attractive. And All right, pause, to... please. You, you, did you hear the difference in how he explained those two situations? So yeah. <laughs> when, the, when the male side comes, he says, Guys get more masculine, you know, they got the buffing up, you know, you know, it's kind of cool. And the girls, you know, yeah, they're getting the titties and stuff. Like, one is positive and one is negative. Don't, you can't call me crazy for this one. Guys, Meerkat, I'm looking at you. Okay, let me get a replay of that. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, replay, replay. If you're going to be looking at me, I want to I wanna experience it. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at you, the motherfucker. First time. Um, the girls, yeah, they start to get titties and they start to get a little, you know, they look more feminine, more attractive, and they're starting to get horny. You know what I mean? That's the age when all the hormones the start hell? to okay. rage. They're starting to get okay, horny. I hate now. it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's horny. the worst thing. Girls getting horny. That's the worst. I hate that shit. But because because he sounded like they got so horny they started to annoy him they were like phil come please come to my place man please and there was like 50 hot latinas that were on on him yeah and he just wanted some dudes bro he wasn't right, we're, not, we're almost done almost done there's one sound bite we got to hear left there were some girls who all admittedly i thought were pretty hot in in my school but i never really took any action or anything against them uh because Stop. that agent yeah. <laughs> you heard it right. You heard took, it. Took yeah. any action against them. Okay. Took action against them. Baxter. <laughs> what do we, Baxter? Please, uh, action against them. What do you mean? C getting a hit on them? Elliot yeah. Roger. Elliot Roger. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. Maybe he's the true. He, maybe he means he's the truest gentleman of them all. Even though oh. Roger, right? <laughs> no actions against them. What in what terms of banning them? Getting them out of his sight. <laughs> getting. Getting them away from him, probably because all those Latinas were grinding on him at that stage or something. Uh huh, dude, what? that was really odd to me. I mean, obviously this whole fucking thing is odd, but dude, that was incredible. I didn't take any action against them. He sounded like a sexual threat. <laughs> yeah, oh, I think worse than that. I think he's like, I didn't take any action against them. You know, I mean, they want to do their sins and stuff. Fuck that. I don't care. I was working about the muscular guys. You know, they got the buff and stuff. They get masculine. That's what he wants to think about. This but all right, of, that's it. That's what it reminds me of is when he talked about when he was on a cocktail of medication and he was going all crazy and he was he was going to do something, quote unquote, something drastic. And I'm like, damn, <laughs> man, what, what are you talking about? Dude. Yep. That's the same time, too. His school life was not a very positive one. He'll openly say he got bullied. Of course, he always ends every story with, in the end, I, I slammed him, and he said, whoa, you kicked my ass. But, you know, <laughs> you know the truth of the story. All right, uh, hot Latina, don't come to school tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> no, that's it. I you can so, stop. I was like, I'm young. I'm focused on, on yeah, school. He's all confident when he's got his stein. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. And I'm, stein. Young, I'm, zip, zip. I'm young. I'm focused on my schoolwork. Mm -hmm. When girls are horny right. at you, you're really focused on your schoolwork. Very normal thing to do. All right. Uh, all right, so I guess uh, that's it with this. We can get to the messages while I yeah. fix everybody's cameras because I fucked up the layout. I get uh, to you anyways, if you, you don't mind. Oh, yeah, then. you can go for the shout outs first. Big up CTC. Jackie says, put this to the Xbox Series S fund for T Fantastic Mr. Sam. Maybe we can bribe her into letting Sam come back. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Fantastic Mrs. Sam. Uh, so we can bribe her to letting Sam back come back. Okay, I'm down with that. Big movie sign says, big ups to the new style host and for Meerkat, the producer. <laughs> big house movie sign. Uh, Jay Wusso says, Mr. Consumer must consume. Remember, th remember that? Absolutely. He yes, but still. The, the, anyway, we're not going to deepen Lion King today. Mr. Gorehouse <laughs> said that at 12, he was working in a factory. No, I was not working in a factory. I only boned up at that age. Come on, Whereas the... the the industrial yeah. revolution hadn't happened yet, so they didn't have those. He was just on the field, like grinding it out, like everybody else. <laughs> yeah, and we all had boys. to. RS Nerd says, uh, "I'm convinced Phil is closeted. It's official." So I'm not ready to say that. I will say that he has no. Uh, Baxter, this is for you, but he doesn't know how to handle the romance of anything, right? Any side of emotionality, he has yeah. no clue what to do. His brain just doesn't function i think but and what that part really tells you like there is 
when it comes to romance and DSP, you can see that he's not fully matured yet, right? Yes. Because there's just deep inside with him, he hasn't fully grown to the point where he's able to commit to any kind of relationship deeply. Intimacy, mm -hmm. the foreign concept to him, like he mistakes romance for what, what's the word? Conformity, I think. So the more same a person is like him, the more we love each other. Look, honey, we're just like, we're just like, uh, the same person, so we must love each other, and that's why she cat looks the way she looks right now. So <laughs> that's why she's got that haircut. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Unfortunately. <laughs> Thanks. Shout out to Curl and Twirls. Go I ahead. do. I do think that he's uh, so far in the closet that he can find his old Xbox. <laughs> he can find the Machinima Xbox. Again. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. That's real deep. Deep lore. That's he's so far in the yeah. yeah. You know, that's that's real that's on, balls deep on on the whole sexuality topic all i'm gonna say is that there's two topics that constantly keep going around on pretty much every platform where people talk about this guy and first one is is he autistic and second one is is he gay so he's definitely given us yeah. plenty of of material to work with and discuss about so yes that speaks for uh, itself so because obviously he loves john rambo like oh, in a special God, way yes. So Who among that. us doesn't? Go ahead. Um, and uh, just, it just, uh, you know, the Lion King thing. Um, there was that series on Netflix recently called uh, Love on the Spectrum. And the main characters in that, Abby, she really loves the Lion King as well. So Ooh, maybe, there's something in that. maybe there's something there. All right. <laughs> Big up, Danny says, uh, the king of hate, the king of hate is probably gay. Utterly Insane says, come on, Alt, if you do, still don't have a favorite dinosaur, you're dead inside. I have favorite dinosaurs. That's irrelevant. <laughs> I have a favorite dinosaur. It's Penosaur, obviously. RS Nerd says, I'm convinced. Oh, okay, I already said that one. Uh, what's up to Mr. Radkin says, big ups, John Carmack. John Carmack reference. Anyone get that? Falling on deaf ears? Uh, John Carmack. John Carmack, the one, the only John is Carmack. It the uh, yes. Similar. It looks okay. The, the, you, he's blonde and has similar forehead to you, Baxter. So that's oh, fine. Oh, okay. Yes. Well, I'll take that as a compliment because John yes, Carmack, I hot. think, was the guy who worked on Doom, so I'll take that as a compliment. Uh huh. He, he's a very upstanding gentleman. Yoda Hall in the house says, 1994 movies as a 12-year-old boy would obsess over. True Lies, The Mask, Speed, Dumb and Dumber. Yes! Mm -hmm. I thought The Mask was the funniest shit of all time. Yeah. And I, when not Speed now, came out, I thought The Mask. Yeah. When Speed yeah. came out, it was really cool, wasn't it? It was like the main thing. And I couldn't imagine sort of going to school and talking about speed and then saying, oh, and also I've got the Lion King on DVD as well. I, I think, yeah. don't think it would corroborate in the same, yeah. To, to, uh, John, John Doe says, two months ago, the Seattle area drastically increased the price of all app-based delivery. Do you think that is adding to DSP's over, overall irritability? Ooh. Possibly. Could. What, uh, what's he, the spreadsheet? He would tell us, though. What's the spreadsheet looking like? Because I think his mood is in line with his uh, low ebb, isn't it, at the moment? I, I, it's definitely on the lower side because Like a Dragon is bringing in the classic, you know, 20 bucks mm -hmm. a night. So that, that's adding to it. But, you know, but that's a good point, John Doe. Who knows? I think he would say that, though, if that was the case. He would fucking just absolutely tell you about it because that's, that's the perfect thing to bitch about, right? If you're a Karen, come on. <laughs> that's, that's made for you. These fucking companies. Over. Yeah. And then he bitch about something. But there you go. All right, big ups, everybody. That's all the shout-outs for now. Meerkat, send us off to our messages, please. All right, let's dive into the messages. Uh, obviously, last week we didn't have one of these shows, so at some point we need to do a message clear-out because we are swamped. But we're going to start with a recent one so we can have something fresh to talk to. And first off, we have Hashi. So shout-out to Hashi, and let's see what we got. Uh, just a quick refresh. Come on, Hashi. Turn the hey, mic on. That all being right. said, Hashi here. And, um... I was watching Meerkat's free stream on Monday, and Phil mentioned how the uh, podcast does better than gameplay, so it really doesn't make sense to shorten it. And we saw that um, he was willing to cancel the Battlefront stream because Battlefront's bad, so he just did Q&A instead. So I'm thinking, eventually, we're just going to see Phil just napping on stream, like, honestly. Not like the Like a Dragon napping. But I mean, like, full on, like, well, you know, guys, if you aren't contributing, you might as well take a nap. And then the whale doesn't show up, and then he, he actually sleeps on stream or something like that. Um. Anyway, guys, uh, big ups, all that stuff, and y'all, y'all already know what's coming up. Here's my cat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so cute. see you guys later. Nice. Hey, what's Incredible. Up? How do you pull that off, dude? That's nice. 
<laughs> yeah, the whole you know the the whole thing with the with the napping is possible now more than ever before because now he learned how to pause the video, and ever since he learned how to pause the the recording of the video in OBS, he's been giving himself the ability to just get off stream and fuck around as much as possible. The other day he wanted to uh, he had like a chip in his nail or something, and he just left the camera <laughs> on and he left the stream for a couple of minutes just to go and trim his nail. Like, bro, he's getting so much lazier the more ability he has to, to afford being lazy that just doesn't pass an opportunity to fuck around uh-huh very important very meaningful and, you know. and and he has a new empty chair emote that is his latest stream chat meme which is <laughs> yeah. while he has gone off stream people have something to spam in his chat i guess which is supposed to be a positive thing somehow isn't it weird though is, right. isn't it weird the, the guy who's made so many videos on YouTube can't play a video while he's away from his stream. What's wrong with you? Come on, you operate a household? You're fucked. <laughs> think it's so easy? Think it's so easy? You do it yourself. Super scuffer. Fuck there. Fuck you. Yoda Hall says, ALT doesn't have a favorite dinosaur because he personally had to flee from them and now he hates <laughs> them all equally. All right, I'll give you 7 out of 10 on that one. Not bad, not bad. All right. I'm down with the old jokes. Make them funny. It's like, <laughs> all right, next one, Meerkat, please. Next one, we have a uh, Beg Bonius Bag of Dents. That's, that's an interesting one. And let's see what they have to say. Big ups, that being said. Long time lurking and stalking style individual, Bill Bonius Bag of Dents yeah. here, coming at you uh, with a thought. Um, so, Phil and Cat are going to make a pawn. Uh, to play in Dragon's Dogma 2, right? <laughs> this is some meta abuse kind of stuff. It really bothered me like when I started thinking about it. You know, he's making his pawn, make a pawn with him. Really disturbing stuff. But I, I had this little thing in my head and I couldn't get it out. So in, in, enjoy, I guess. I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> Honey, uh, would you like to make a pawn with me? Yeah, so I'm going to make one just like you that we can wheel out for the Dented Madness. And we can make it match us, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take this fuck me up fam style haircut. And we're going to put it on the pod. And then we're going to take this shoe shine black um, that we have here. <laughs> we're going to put that on the match you and me. And um, no, I don't think the weight slider will go that far. But it, it'll be close anyway. I, I love you, my soul there. Um, so yes, I did order the big dollars back. Jasper, get down from there. <laughs> anyway, I want to say, I love the podcast. Uh, big shout out to the Tractor Bee and Blood Love Brain Worms uh, and my horn dogs. Uh, Sam, uh, get back in here, bandage that tongue up. ALT can't do it all himself. Steve, get yes. well soon, brother. Uh, Meerkat Bob. Who? I'm looking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there we go. Thank you for the message. <laughs> that was a robust message. Big ups, dude. That was robust. Yep. Very robust. I like my favorite part of that was the black. But what do we think about that? Why are we not watching the fucking character creation? <laughs> Come on, man! He loves character creation. He spends an hour in every other game. Why can't we not do character creation on this game, Meerkat? Because you played it. Is there anything that would lead to him not wanting to do character creation? I'm thinking maybe a weight slider, like this caller said. Uh, perhaps. I don't know. I haven't played the new one, but it's a character creator like any other. I think they're going to make like a cat person because I, I think those are in the game. So clearly, oh, you know, that's just the, the that's just the no brainer. I think what they should do is they should make their own child what their child would look like, uh, like you know, together as a character in the as the porn no, that's too that's too intimate for them. Come on. Well, the <laughs> cat person. Is. It's a cat person to start with. So Jasper's in it, and then a bit of Phil, a bit of cat. It, they could see the future. Um, also, when you said Jasper, so when Phil said to Cat he was going to make a porn, I just thought it's going to be Phil and Cat, and she's going to think like porn film. <laughs> They're going to make a porn. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, maybe maybe that's why she wanted to do it so much because she was very excited for this and then she was like oh it's a it's a video game thing oh okay phil oh i thought she might finally get something yeah honey i want to make a porn with you you gotta enjoy the fact that in those character creators he's always trying to make he's 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 tapping into the vast energies the vast sea of his fantasy only to make himself and that's (laughs) That's so awesome. As a content creator, I want to see more DSP in video games, obviously. Yep. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I, I'm kind of guilty of that, too. Anytime I start a new fantasy RPG game, I just make a guy with a sword and a shield, and, and I just rock with it. But I know everyone's different. That doesn't interest me at all, either. I, just, I don't yeah. give a shit what I look like in a game. It's like, all right, just do whoever. I don't care. But, but yeah, things are things kind of different it. when you're a streamer, because yeah. then you got to actually, you know, put in some effort to do something at least different, something at least interesting. Yeah. Like, you know, have yeah. fun. Like, he used to have fun with He used to spend hours on that shit. He would do talk about different He'd say, oh, I could be a hot Asian. I could be a black dude. Yeah. People go through all those races. Today, we, um, we, what, with all the fucking Asian shit we listen to today on WPIG, he, he went to, he said, oh, I could be an Asian bodybuilder. <laughs> Whoa. Like, he couldn't believe you could be an Asian and a bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, that was I some crazy person. idea. Because uh, it doesn't fit the stereotype, and he uh, obviously uh. perceives everybody by the stereotype. That's why all his humor is based around that. Yeah. Ah, okay. Got it, got it, got it. Even though, <laughs> and he, even though, you know, Asian people got all the martial arts and stuff, they got so many people that are fit. You know, one of the most popular personalities of all time is Bruce Lee, and that dude was uh -huh. ripped. So... I don't know, bro. And also, he had a very intimate experience with an uh, Asian bodybuilder himself. Uh, so intimate that he, you know, gave right. up his, his soul. He bared his soul to the gentleman, said, I'm an alcoholic. I'm crying right. to you in a parking lot. He also kissed his shield, as far as we know. Oh, definitely. Kiss <laughs> that's, that, that's a nugget of truth. He did, get, he did get fucking bashed with the shield. We don't know if the kiss yeah. ever happened. But I, I probably did. Anyway. All right, everybody. Next up, we have Phil Ip Burn L. That's, oh, that's hell how it's yeah. spelled. Hello, that being said, I hate to say it, I really do. But I have to admit, you guys put on a pretty freaking amazing show. You know what I mean? Oh, thank you. How bad could it be if it's all about me, right? And you might say, well, oh, Phil, how do you stay positive in a world where everything is against you and there's fucking drama and people slandering you every freaking day and and, you know, there's a huge cloud of turds that just follows you around, dropping crap all over you all the time, and you're dodging left and dodging right, and this storm of bullshit just never freaking stops, right? Well, let me tell you, it's because I am the happiest guy on earth. I love what I do every day, just being able to talk to you guys and chill and hang out, doing some games together. And, of course, the biggest thing, the most enormous thing, my wife, Kat, is so supportive, and we love each other. You know, I'm just grateful every single day that I can wake up take a big dump, have some coffee. I, not that I use that sugary shit that my wife puts in her coffee. I don't want to get fat, right? Anyway, there you go. I'm just so grateful to have your support, so please keep talking about me. There we go. Glad, <laughs> glad we got to hear Whoa. from the man himself. We're doing yeah, the whole amazing message. We're, we're your very real positive. fans. Yeah. He gave us the praise stream. He's very supportive. I love this. Big ups to whoever makes those. You do it well. And have good, good lines, too. It's not just like saying shit either. Good most, uh, there were some good lines in there. Big up. Uh, Speedy says, most accurate character creator for Cat is the Ogren in Dark Tide with the underbite and bowl cut. And Meerkat, I have, I have a picture of that if you'd like it to show to the people. Uh, it is very toxic. Just letting you know now. It is toxic. Yeah. I, can, I don't agree I can, with this. Yeah. I can pull disclaimer, it disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. Uh, disclaimer. This is, I don't agree with this. Thank you. I was a different character. Got it? I can send you a message if you need uh, it. I got it. Well, I got it on my end. Okay. Because uh, I can't really use Discord right now. But this is uh, an example of an ogren in Dark Tide. <laughs> this is... Uh, yeah, you guys should be able to see that <laughs> if you didn't already. Oh, whatever that means, right? Yeah. I don't, I don't, know, I legs. Don't, I don't get it, dude. He's only got little legs. The, I don't get the reference, first. <laughs> she looks nothing like this. She has a different oh? hairstyle, you idiots. <laughs> yeah. She, uh, first of all, she's a female douchebag. <laughs> if you're going to do parody, you have to look close to the person you're doing a parody of. She doesn't fuck, have any tattoos. Look. Yeah, she doesn't have any tattoos, dumb fuck. <laughs> she doesn't have weapons, piece of shit. When was the last time you saw her in armor? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, like she has all this armor on, okay? Yeah. <laughs> all, right, all right, everybody, let's keep it moving. Next up, we got, well, we got Jasper. So let's see, this one is very oh, short. God. So I guess Jasper feels like talking today, but not much. Oh, yeah. 
Meow. <laughs> this is a message from Jasper. Help me. <laughs> there you go. I'm not sure what you you're Jasper. trying to say, but... <laughs> A mimp, that, I think that's a mimp style message from one of the uh, suffer, super chuffer chuffer jets. <laughs> Not much we could do, Jasper. We'd love to help you. Send us, yeah. tell us how to help. That's what we need. We'd love <laughs> to help. We're I trying guess... to acquire some extra claws for you as we speak, though. That's all I can do. Go Maybe ahead. he's talking about like support. Maybe like YouTube style contributions or ah. tips. I'm not exactly sure. I'm used to hearing like when somebody asks for help. When Phil asks for help, he makes it very clear how he wants that help. And it's always financial, of course. So I expect a little bit more, like, expand on the topic. Give me, like, a quick pre-stream, maybe an emergency video. But Jasper, not very talkative, so it, I understand. Yeah. Henry Varro says, we need feedback, Jasper. Yes, please go to our suggestion <laughs> yeah. box, Jasper, and then we can talk, all right? Tips on the liquidity of his business, but he also needs membership, memberships. Remember, that's, someone asked an awesome question, like, if we could be in Phil's house for five minutes, what would you do? You know, and Phil's not there, obviously. And the, my favorite answer is put the claws back on Jasper. <laughs> That's the best answer possible. <laughs> Sam said, "Like uh, do do cable management. That's good too. Yeah, people I'm manage the office. Cables, slightly rearrange yeah. furniture. Like put the ottoman back in the in the. Uh, yeah. <laughs> put it back wherever the, the fuck it was in the bedroom. Yeah." Yeah. You're gonna to need to clean though. If you're gonna spend time in there, you are gonna to need to clean. Nah, fuck that. <laughs> Anyways, Pick up the ant traps. Yeah. Uh, up next, we got under attack. Shout out to under attack. Big ups. Big ups. That being said, I just want to put this concept out there for all my musical style, video editing style detractors. I feel like we need a parody of the old school. R&B song with Monica and Brandy, the um, that boy's mine. But we need Jay and Rich to be the Monica and Brandy parts with Phil right in the middle. I think it would be a classic. Bang. <laughs> I'm gonna need to get on that. I, I I've All been right. saying for a long time. I don't know what song he's been talking about, but now he reminded me of uh, the classic song "No Scrubs," which I know. Oh, yeah, it fits him to a T without even be made about him. Because you know what they say. Um, I don't want no scrubs. A, a scrub is a guy who can't get I, no love from me. Sitting I, on a passenger side of his best friend's I, ride. I did it, guys. I did it, Learcat. I already did that one. You did that? Show, yeah. <laughs> it was in one of those fucking... Um, uh, it was the first kind of collaboration... The, the collaboration. The kind of... Met, the, what's the CD where there's a lot of fucking songs on it? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or compilation. Compilation, compilation yeah. I, I got it. I think. It was with Snoop. But yeah, it was one of the, it was like, I just did the chorus, literally only the chorus, and that was it. But yeah, that, that needs to be expanded into like a, a whole song. Yes, it's just such it a works. Good idea. All I can think of is Derek made a compilation. <laughs> oh, God. Come on. Come oh, on. Yeah. Uh, he that, says his parents wouldn't let him have a CD player, so. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's been on his grind again on Twitter, because man, he's oh, just yes. been replying to everybody. Uh, trying to kid them up. There was one of the girls that said, and I, I guess that's like a kind of like a generic response she sends to everybody just to keep them watching. But <laughs> he he told her something along the lines of like, "I wish I could do a scene with you," and she replied with, uh, "I'll I'll let you know when our schedules line up." And everybody just responded to this with like, "No, stop it, stop! You don't know what you're doing." <laughs> yeah, I bet he got so fucking hard on that one. Holy shit, he probably busted right then. Holy shit. Last Last I've heard, he's already uh, back on judging the shape and sizes of your dick, pretty much. Ah, <laughs> yeah. The thing is, though, he, this on. could be like, he's calling, and he could make a really good porn star, and that could be really good for him, but then it'd be bad for everyone else who has to watch the pornography with him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, well, I figure he could be a pretty good producer, or at least like he, he knows <laughs> enough about this stuff. It's like it's, it's all that his brain seems to be occupied with, yeah. so... If somebody gave him the opportunity, maybe he could make some some kind of you know, successful. It, uh, it's just one issue, though. It would be pretty weird if he starts asking the actresses to say his name in the middle of the, of the recording, <laughs> oh, right? Yeah. Well, they could do those like role playing type of stuff where the the male character is going to be called Derek in every single one of the videos, so oh, he yeah, gets that's, his. That's a good. And it, it's still like it could be even an ongoing narrative of like this Derek <laughs> guy just. You know, hanging out with all these hot girls and stuff. 
He's, a, like, he's, de- he's definitely a producer <laughs> at the moment. He's definitely a producer oh, of, oh, yeah. of many definitely. issues. <laughs> he, he needs to be a mark in marketing for porno. Like he he would be all he he knows how to handle Twitter. I mean, he doesn't know how to do it, but he does it enough. <laughs> he's the consumer of all the pornography, though. So he yeah, just true. has to send it to himself. Yeah. It's going to hurt the industry if he he if, if he joins the industry, they're going to lose a massive amount of profit. Yep. Oh, actually, he oh he doesn't. He steals everything. So fuck that. That's not even true. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. uh, anyways, next up we got Tony T the Black. Oh, yo, it's your boy Tony T. It's been a minute since you've seen a style with no gimmicks. I'm riding in my city right now, and I just had a funny metaphor that I hope y'all enjoy. So, uh, big shout to that being said, and the whole track community. Next time, Chiquino of the Ring come around, I got y'all. I got so busy. Hey. But, but I got y'all. I already had the song written and everything. But whatever. Back to the metaphor. Um, this is about his Baldur's Gate and Asterion leaving and not uh, leaving behind his clothes. I'm going to do it like this. Kick it to you one time, one time. It's like you have a friendship, okay? Snort, snort. And you have a friendship with two guys that you use for clout. You use for gaming. You make travel across town. To record video games is never fun. Drive around because of your bad back. Ack, ack. And then next thing you know, when the ultimatum comes up about getting paid, they leave. Now all the stuff is left behind, all the shirts that y'all made together, all the content. But they take their clothes. What the hell? I just want to sell sandwiches. (laughs) If I'm the only one laughing right now, I feel like an idiot, but much love to y'all. Peace. <laughs> the ending uh, made it even better, though. Yeah, uh, I just want to have a quick comment about the first part. Speaking of the Chiking, if you have something to send us, you can send us. We can use it as a as an interlude type of thing to play during the, the final. That's cool. You're just not going to be oh, a yeah, part definitely. of the competition. That's fine. Yeah, and that the finals kind of needs that. So if you have, because we only have 10 songs. So if you want to send a song that can't count for to win, but just, you know, for, for fun. Please, yeah. please send it my way. Or whenever, really. If you got something yeah, that just, you think is good, just send us our way and we can play it. Yep. And even if it's just, if you have a video on your channel that's a song and you want us to play it, we can do that too. So send it my way. No promises if it's something like shitty, you know, that's different. Can we talk, can we talk about how Astorian was a, a metaphor for John Rambo leaving? Oh, and, please. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Take that one. Go ahead. Oh, you, you spearhead this. Like they even someone even asked about it in his chat, and he was like, "Ah, oh, no, I don't think this is quite the same." But uh, I really think it was like the way he was talking about it, the sense of um, the fact he got betrayed, the fact that he wanted. I mean, Baxter's going to have to unpack this a bit better than me, but I think there was a, a sense of he wanted some sort of. Um, he designed in the game a way that they could talk, maybe work it out, uh, maybe even fight or, or walk away. But he wanted some conversation about it instead of them just walking, going, nothing. He felt like aggrieved that, that in some way they were a baby because they didn't talk about it and couldn't like, you know, uh, um, come to some mutual agreement in the end. I think that was a huge metaphor for that. Um, I've got more to say about Astorian as a character and his opinion on it. But for John Rambo, I think that what do you think, Baxter? Well, obviously, what what you described is uh, is right so far. I would agree with that absolutely. Um, a story and leaving and not giving him any choice when games usually give you a choice, like you can get gear back. There's also games where you can't get your gear back, but um, taking away that sense of agency that he has in the video game, likening likening it to a situation that's close to something that he actually experienced, is gonna make him angry, obviously. <laughs> And oh, yeah. taking away that power, like I, I say this all the time, narcissists, they crave power. They want power over you. They want power over the situation. They want power over their audience. They want power over their finances, over your finances as well, in the worst case. And if you, if you take that power away and tell them, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go away. You're not going to have any influence over me anymore. And I'm going to keep all the stuff that you gave me. Bye bye. You can't do anything about it. He's going to get mad as hell. Yeah, yeah, uh, and, it, and I think that person who brought that up, by the way, a super scuffer, is one minute man. That was one minute right. man that brought up that point. So he had to listen to it. <laughs> yeah, he has to listen to it. That's the worst because holy shit, you can't lose him. <laughs> and, and he couldn't call him a bunch of words and tell him to to stop watching his stream and stuff because it's one minute man. Right. Yeah, and in, in in the context of the game, I've heard some people say uh, I can't attest to that personally because I haven't. 
play that game so much. But uh, apparently, if you build a good enough relationship with the guy, you have different outcomes. I don't know how different True. it is, but... Yeah. There's five yeah. different solutions to the situation. And he called the game, as far as I remember, he called the game bad for not having a solution where you can actually fight him. Spoiler alert, <laughs> there is one solution where you can actually fight him. <laughs> so, yeah, you can also resolve the situation peacefully. Uh, and he doesn't, it doesn't become the Vampire Lord. So, and, and it's so possible. Astorian, when you first meet him in game, spoilers alert, yeah, um, he's a trickster, and the first thing he does is trick you. And you learn that this game is not going to be like all the other video games with the yellow paint. It might mess you about a bit, and you might have to make some interesting choices. So he teaches you that as a character. Then all through the game, he's like a sneaky, like deceitful, like, you know, uh, villainous style character. And then at the end, when he tricks Phil and walks off with all his stuff, Phil's angry because he doesn't think it's like good role playing and it's good enough options in the game. But isn't it exactly what the game taught him about Astorian as a character is that he tricks you, these things can happen. Like, and then it gives you the idea you might do a second playthrough in a different way and make different decisions. And isn't that what the game's about as well? So that's <laughs> thing maybe cross, yeah. You guys are wild. You're, you're expecting him to pay attention to the game. Come on. What's wrong <laughs> right. with you? You got part of the household? Him, but he never learned. Yeah. He hates this game because of all the reasons you guys are pointing out why the game is cool. Also, yeah. I would not. <laughs> he oh, wants ahead, okay. to hate it because uh, people praise it so much. And he wants to be the guy to be the contrarian and say, no, this is not the game of the year. This is not a 10 out of 10. Hmm. Yeah. I'd also would like to see him play games. Like, I don't. I don't specifically know which game it was. I think it was Gothic. Don't quote me on that. Where essentially you do a quest and the person rewards you by saying, hey, go there. I left, I left some treasure there for you. And guess what? You go there, there's no treasure. So effectively the person lied to you, which is like a thing that RPGs should do more often. I've, I've never encountered a person in, uh, in a recent Bethesda game that's told, hey, get your reward from there and there is no uh, reward, right? Yep. Yeah. So I, I would want to uh, see him get ass mad and butt hurt about person in a video game lying about him getting a reward at a specific place in a specific time and there's just nothing there oh god that would he would lose his fucking mind oh the developer you know what i would call that look here very closely bad game design okay yeah but that's okay, so my do not trust now. everyone right yeah about the on the point that he doesn't like boulder's gate and he doesn't want to enjoy it he spent like two days maybe longer talking extensively about his relationship with the character in the game it might be a negative relationship he doesn't like him he didn't make the same choices as me he wanted to do this thing with the vampires like he loves he's, he's involved with the character to the point where he like inhabits this world with the character in his fantasy world so he absolutely fucking loves it it's, it's the like spent two days talking about it but i i think the the, the whales here that are keeping this to 100 bucks a stream like it's one of those kind of like weird power things where like they know he hates it like clearly you could tell he hates this fucking game hmm. but they want to play in it so they like it's a I, it might be oic himself i don't fucking know but they make sure he gets that hundred consistently because they want him to keep playing like they want to keep that control you know like who knows why people donate to Phil? The real, the non, I was talking about the fans that aren't like the d dollar bitches, you know, the big, the big whales, right? Why are they donating? Who knows? Shout like, out to Steve of the Dead, who <laughs> me and Steve did an episode on thus, who talked about his, Phil's audience and the people that do that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, so like, what, what are we doing here? What's the purpose of this? But in this case, I really think they're like, what they want that control, right? I, I want to keep Phil playing this fucking game he hates. I, I don't know. Braxter, what do you think? I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? So, like, what, what keeps people donating for a game that they know Phil is very unpurposely, I mean, very openly saying he hates, right? But they continually make sure it gets $100 so he can drop it. And even, in fact, on top of that, some people that are always, always tipping every stream, they are not tipping on Like a Dragon, clearly, as you could tell. Yeah. Because they don't want him to, they want to show, we don't like that. We like this. But they're, you know, like, what's the, what's, what is this, you know? It's, I'm not, I'm not sure it's actually people. I think it's, I think it might be, is it one person who's actually bankrolling the Baldur's Gate thing? Because at that point, I think that person is just a hardcore fan and they want to see DSP play it no matter how much he hates it. But it's, it's like a weird form mm. How can I describe it? A weird form of catharsis. I want to see another person play 
this game no matter how much they suffer through it. It's why I have to throw up my hands. Yeah, it's interesting because you'd have to at first. You'd have to have like big money to chuck around, so you can't be that stupid, or maybe you inherited it. Um, yeah. Then next, you've got to uh, be involved with Phil enough. Like you can't just be some random who likes Bolden's Gate, and like you wouldn't understand the concept that you have to keep tipping a hundred dollars. You know, you wouldn't understand it. You need to be fully ingratiated with Phil and his ways to to do that. So you've got to be committed. You've got to be reason. Like, I know that we make a lot of disparaging comments about his fans, but this person can't be that stupid, can they? Because they earn enough money to have a hundred dollars. I mean, maybe there's other ways to get money in life. Maybe I'm, yeah. I'm being naive there, but, um, and yeah, then they've got to have some sort of deep commitment to want Phil to, like, I thought maybe there's so much romance in Baldur's Gate and people think that the person who tips him a lot has some, some sort of romantic, affection for phil and so maybe they wanted to force him down a pipe where he would have to explore feelings and things <laughs> in a game because it's quite like that in boulder's gate sometimes but he refused yeah, yeah. Didn't he, so yeah, oh, yeah you actually you actually answered my the question for me tougher i think but because you just said that they they are trying to get phil to change yeah that actually might be the case they're actually trying to show him force him to play this game by bankrolling it and saying look at this game just play it you will like it but mm. the thing is He's already made up his mind the second he's heard about it and then it becomes popular and he's like oh it's popular oh i guess that means it's bad so he, he keeps playing it but he's not going to change his opinion he's not <laughs> he's not a guy who goes through a game and then says oh this game's actually good that happens very rarely especially I, about games which are popular but yeah. if only they'd released it you know in august before this rpg overload because releasing it in december was a massive fucking mistake wasn't it yeah oh, well for his on his uh, opinion well, they did release it in August, didn't they? But Phil didn't play it until December. Oh, yeah. Well, no one's going to hear about Baldur's Gate after Starfield, right? So. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And it, it also it didn't have a console port until later on, so he's oh, only playing true. it because uh, it came on console. Yep. Were you ready to move on to the next one? Yes. Next up, we have uh, Ink, Ink Ribbon Devourer. So let's yeah. see. Hey there, guys, at uh, That Being Said. Big ups. Thanks uh, last time for reading my uh, message. Um, coming back again to mm, bring up, I had a thought. Uh, I wonder if Phil actually is a bit stunted. Um, yes. With him kind of dating fans, you know, younger fans, especially um, being stuck in his 80s retro era mindset. And with how badly he fails to adapt to change in games like with 3D space or just having any spatial awareness, it makes me wonder if like he's actually mentally stunted enough that he's just unable to handle any of that. But yeah, I don't know. Um, big up to all. I uh, hope that Steve is doing good. And uh, thanks y'all for what you do. See ya. Hey, big ups. Big ups. I, clearly, there's in so many ways, like I started the show with, he's stunted in many ways. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, the, one of the biggest ones is, we, I believe, is it when you like stunted, you send, sometimes happen from some form of trauma, right? So let's say something seriously bad happens to you in your life, then you kind of get stuck there. Is that right, Baxter, on how what stunted can mean? Uh, I know you, it's not always, but can mean. Serious trauma, you dissociate. Yeah. And you, you keep part of your personality back there, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. You so frequently regress back to there. Yeah. It seems like we would know about that if that happened, because Phil would love to talk about every hardship that he's ever had in his fucking life. We know that. Uh, we hear about all of them. <laughs> so, including not getting figurines, including, um, you know, mommy not uh, paying for this or this, uh, making, you know, giving Phil a car that was too old and stuff like that. You know, he was also bullied through his high school years. That is true. Um, yeah. There's pretty there's something clear cut. There. There's clear-cut markers as well. I can put some fingers on it. There's a concept called transfer learning. I'm, I'm not sure if you guys have heard about it before. It's when you do a task and you finish that task, you learn something, then you do a task that is similar, but not the same. And usually a person who has no learning disability can get the learning that they've done from the finished task and put it onto the new task if it's similar in scope or similar in what you're supposed to do. You hmm. would expect this in Dark Souls games, right? So if you play Dark Souls 1, you would expect any normal person with no learning disability to also go do good in Dark Souls 2 and Dark Souls 3 from now on. Yeah. And this just doesn't happen with DSP. He plays Dark Souls games more often, 
he gets better, he gets more acquainted with them, but he still performs badly in them. And the other part I wanted to uh, touch upon was when it comes to learning abilities was... Now I, I forgot my train of thought. Go on. Yes. Okay, I got something on this. Yeah. Uh, well, the uh, first thing the caller mentioned was dating fans. And this to me, I think he does it because uh, it's just easy. Because usually when you try and date somebody, you got to impress them first. You know, you got you to gotta start getting familiar with their personality and they get familiar with yours. But with fans, they are already impressed. They already like you. They're already more familiar with you than you are with them. So it's just yep. kind of easy. And uh, the, the second thing is when it comes to like stunted, what I think the, the case is with him is like this dude has been living inside of his comfort zone for the last like 20 years. So when you don't get to go out there and, and break out of your comfort zone and be challenged, you can't develop. And in his case, you can even regress in your uh, oh. <laughs> social abilities and your the, the yes. way that you look the way that you talk if you're not challenged consistently on those things that you just you know your brain kind of atrophies right and this is where i where we look back to my lost terrain of thought it's the concept of learned helplessness like you go around and your shit's always getting taken care of like mom does the dishes for you mom does yep. food for you mom does your homework for you stuff like that and when you're an adult suddenly Oh, mom's not there anymore. I can't do these things by myself. So suddenly you're sitting there and you're like, well, okay, I guess I can't do these things. I'm not even going to try. I could, but I'm not gonna. And that's also, that's also a clear cut marker of some form. Well, not learning disability, but an inability to learn or to adapt to changing circumstances. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so that's a good uh, point. Yeah. Go ahead, Super Discover. I'd like to also mention in the, the caller, they mentioned 3D games. And I'd just like to point out that 3D doesn't exist. It's just two dimensions coming at you really quick. Like <laughs> oh, that, that's... Right? So yeah. there's that. We all um, know that. Just, you don't have to say that. We all know yeah. that. Go ahead. Right. And then uh, I, I think that um, feels like a complex, like, man baby. Um, and so I think there's some form of denial going on as well. And I think denial doesn't allow you to uh, grow as a person because instead of saying oh wait i've done something wrong here let me learn let me like improve myself um it's just never anyone else's fault is it and i think it does go back to some deeper you know it's, it's evolved throughout his childhood you're right his mum's done everything for him in that way and he's just uh he's not going to change because it's never his requirement to it. it's always the world around him that's wrong uh, that's a steve uh the dead thing taught me that about uh, Baxter was talking about it as well. It's something to do with internal and external locuses of control yep. and being a being a narcissist. So, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Of, of yeah, the, the only reason Phil even got a girlfriend was because they came after him. Yeah, you know, well, well, excuse me, Leanna came after him. Uh, um, Chaos Realm the cat took a little work because, but he was on the hunt. He was messaging yep. her on Twitter. He was. I th I bet I would love to know. Obviously, we could never ask him. But how the fuck, what, what were the steps that he went through before he found a girl that had a question that he responded to? Because remember, he was not following her. So was he just saying like, okay, who has retweeted me that has a girl pick? I, I, that wouldn't put it past him. How else are you going to find her? You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, she, she retweeted my tweet this time. Okay, I'll, say, I'll, I'll check her out. Okay. Uh, oh, I can comment on this one. I wonder how many he did that to, you know? And we wouldn't know because now they're deleted. I'm sure long gone. And no one knew right then he was on the hunt. So Yeah, that's that's yeah. a very interesting thought because in the original cat tweet, she didn't tag him. She was just nope. asking it out on the internet. It's like, hey, was, I have a OBS problem. Yeah. Did he, uh, was she streaming at the time before? She uh, yes, she was streaming. But this, I mean, she was streaming and literally she would have two, two, two watchers was a good day for her, you know? Mm. So yeah. she would have usually zero, sometimes one. And remember, like he likes to tell you, she doesn't know how to stream. When she had any viewers, she was happy as shit, bouncing around, looking at chat, interacting with chat. She was having time for fucking life. I just thought like maybe he might have seen her somewhere else and then found her social media. No, no to... chance of that. Zero chance. Mm. She did retweet him though earlier that year, which is why I think the the getting him getting her on the hunt on on the just in case of problems break the glass list of girls maybe you know, yeah. which I, I you know who knows we're never gonna know but. What I would give for uh, to know what DSP told her to get his foot in the door. Like, was he, after the first conversation, was he like, you know, actually, I'm an alcoholic and you need to come to me and take care of me? Or was he like, 
was he like i'm actually was he more boastful was he like yeah i have this super mature adult household that i have to run and actually i can't run it by myself so please come also i'm actually an alcoholic so well yeah. the the key point was she was looking to get out already mm. so that right, was like right. the timing worked out perfect for her him as again as so many things have in his life uh she needed a place to go Philip wanted someone to live with him very, very badly. Okay. Uh, because we cannot have this single life too long, my friends. That's, oh my God, he could not handle that. Remember, there's no one around anymore. He has to do yep. the dishes. He has to clean. He has to clean his clothes now, guys. Uh, yeah. Huh? Dude, I'll do everything myself. The, the, the Instagrams of the microwave wheels and uh, microwave <laughs> meals and the sad, what was it? The bachelor dinners during uh, Thanksgiving. Oh my God. Yeah. That was a sight <laughs> to behold, dude. <laughs> That fucking slop, amazing. Devour, devour. Yeah. Devour. Do you think in some way he felt more pressure because he's on stream and people can see his life, so he just had to get someone quickly? Yes. Oh, absolutely. 100%. Anyone quickly. Yeah. And fulfilling that mother role. So it's not very romantic, is it? It doesn't... No. No, absolutely not. He cannot be by himself. You can tell because he's a mess when he's by himself. He has to, he can't take care of himself. He ne he's never learned to take care of himself by himself. Oh, someone yes. always took care of him. Uh, first it was his mom, then it was Panda Lee. Well, I technically the condo time. I don't know what happened in the condo time. Well, parents you, were not by. That was John Rambo. He took, yeah, high, so. And he took care of himself then. You see what happened to that apartment, don't you? You yeah. see how that <laughs> thing looked? <laughs> Fucking statue so much, stacked so high, you couldn't even see the counter. Jesus yeah. Christ. You see what that turned out? <laughs> yeah. I also, I also love around that time when he was vlogging the condo, he was talking about how tiny it was. And all you can see is just statues and boxes. <laughs> it's like, man, I wonder yeah. why. <laughs> It's Such so a wild, dude. Person who goes, yes. oh, I got five figures. Fuck that. Buy fifty more. Yep. <laughs> I think he honestly saw that as an investment in some way in his brain. I think he thought they'd be have resale value in the future as like some yeah. sort of collection. Oh, great! Well, he was, he he probably, he was, yeah, someone right. convinced him of that in the shop, didn't they? They said this is a really good purchase. Yeah. Buy yep. this. Yep. Like, keep coming back. <laughs> he would. Yeah. He loves that shit. He, he could go to Walmart and say this bread is an investment. He's like, all right, okay, I can frequently, get into that. Frequently calls out <laughs> marketing tricks. Falls for yeah. the free trap, buys every shit that says gamer on it. Amazing. <laughs> oh god, he loved thinkgeek.com. If you remember yeah. that website, that was his jam, dude. He was buying everything on ThinkGeek. In a to, to loop back on the conversation that you guys brought up with how, how the messages went, I don't know how, but I'm pretty sure whatever discussion happened happened after midnight. Because then oh. he, he gets to drink some of that potion. And he gets that confidence boost, and man, we're we're balling after midnight. Uh huh. Send a few tweets to Rambo. Send a few tweets to Chaos Realm. Back and forth. <laughs> Pass out. Wake up. Same thing again. I, I got. It. We're never gonna know, but I would love to know how that whole courtship went because he did speed run getting her over to Seattle for that first meetup. Like that was a definite speed run. We're talking. Yeah. Three months of of maximum time of knowing each other, but for the first time, she went to Seattle. It was three months, I believe. I did a whole stream on it, the timeline, but that's, I mean, that's, she was trying to get out and you know, they went to the mall, played their little games, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's so fun, fun to hear about how that really went, which we'll never know. Yep. Shall we move on to the next caller? Yes. Please. Oh, quick shout out yeah. real quick. If you don't mind. Yep. Real, I'm real just going to let the dog out the back while you do that. I'm just in and out. It's fine. Okay. Get down from there, Jasper. All right. Joe Dub in the house says burger. Burger picture, nice. Love that. Looks a burger with two burger. buns, lettuce, Classic. tomatoes. Uh, Joe Dub again in the house says, "Here's why I won't get you the blood test, Jasper." Goes <laughs> <laughs> to the Jasper message. We apologize, Jasper. We don't agree with that, Jasper. That's this this gentleman's thought. That's Joe Dub's idea. Big ups to defeated Samuel B. Uh, Retro Dude Man X says, "Phil's BG3 rant exposed himself. He is Asterian IRL. Absolutely. That's just like mm. him, dude." Uh huh. <laughs> I run the house as Phil states multiple times that he wants an optimal path, which is why he takes forever. There was no best decision, just your decision. And that's scary for Philip yeah. Burnell. Yeah. He, I think he, last, last thing on this whole Asterian thing. I think he also criticized that there's no matter what choice he would have picked, it would have been a bad choice. And I was like, dude, I played Witcher three recently. There's never a good choice to make in that game. He must have hated that game. <laughs> Oh, well, he did. He complained the fuck about that. That's one of the games he bitched the whole way and said, well, you know, four out of five. Aya's awkward big ups for the gift. Punished Lasagna says, many of those figures actually do have resale value, 
but he broke them. Yeah, half of those were fucking broke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then tried to repair them, too. <laughs> Cody Taylor's it? asking a question. Go ahead. Uh, let's ask Mir. What would you like to see leak? DSP's Twitter, current bank account, Facebook, or Discord? Obviously, this is a hypothetical. Uh, I'm hoping you're saying that's a hypothetical. I don't want any of those things leaked. But if you're asking in a very hypothetical fashion, what do you mean by Twitter? You mean like Twitter as in DMs? Because I think that would be my choice if it was hypothetical, of course, in this hypothetical land. Mm. What's your take on that, Meerkat? Um, I'm still curious about how the... If, if he ever changed his spending habits based on the impact of the bank leaks, because at this point, we all know it's him. Whatever he said, yeah. the, the side scrollers yeah. was just nonsense. But I, I wonder if that actually, you know, it, it flipped the switch, at least somewhat in his mind, to be like, oh, man, there's so many people that are just <laughs> pointing out how much money I spent on this bullshit. It's like, is it, is it possible that I'm a little too reckless with my money? Um, no, they're a bunch of idiots. <laughs> yeah, that's what I think. I think it'd be the same. Or he'd try to hide it in PayPal more, maybe. Like that would be how he gets around it. Just in case uh, they find it again. It's all they will see shit. Yeah. You know? What were the options again? Uh ba Twitter, bank account, Facebook, or Discord. Right. So with Twitter, I don't think he's got any friends, so I don't think he's talking to anyone. With the bank account, I think we all know what he spends. <laughs> it's all on WWE <laughs> champions. Um yeah. and uh Discord doesn't exist. It officially doesn't exist. So maybe yes. that one, because uh, Facebook, again, is that friends? Because I don't think he's got any. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Baxter, what's your, what's your call on this hypothetical yeah, I, I, in I Minecraft like, situation? I would be like the dirty gossiper. I'd go for his Twitter because, for if we could get re retroactively get access to all the accounts he had and read all of that, <laughs> that would be cool because we would have the Android the Giant account as well that he deleted. <laughs> Oh, but, God, can you uh, no, I'm, I'm going to go with Twitter. I, w I want to know how he, how he wrist up CAD, you know? <laughs> Good question, though. Good hypothetical question in yep. Minecraft. Salute Your Snorts says, just finished and sent my final submission in. Big up, Salute Your Snorts. We, yes. are, we have now received the final submissions of Dark Side Drill and Salute Your Snorts. That is two submis final submissions in. Big ups. Uh, Methbear says, Cat was there early July 2017, a month after first contact. They saw Spider-Man Homecoming at release. She was there that early for the first meetup. Big up is Meth Bear. So that is one month after yeah. Twitter contact. I think Twitter. 2017, like he, he officially made that Twitter statement of Panda leaving at like end of May 2017, I think. Yeah, and yes, he was very end. Yep. Message, he was answering Pat on her Twitter account in the middle of June. And then he took a vacation in June or July. I can't remember exactly. Yeah. But that, it was the first vacation where he flew Cat out, yeah. I, be I bet he only revealed, like, they broke up because he, like, all right, well, Cat's got to move in pretty fast, so I got to make some moves here. So I have to yeah. announce this. I don't want to, but I want her to, you know, like, Cat has to ABC, get out of her situation. always be closing. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Well, you know, desperate uh, boys do desperate things uh -huh. and he was trying yeah. to lock her up as fast as possible that's why he proposed to panda lee even though uh, apparently according to him the relationship was falling apart uh but he tried that to was the last ditch her. effort yeah last ditch effort True. to save the thing yep you, you know with most normal couples if they did a stream together you could ask them how they got together <laughs> yes yeah can't do that and you have a nice little story you know like oh we met yeah. each other at this and it's kind of fun <laughs> there'll be no fun if dsb uh yeah, yeah. what are you asking that jump fuck <laughs> What do you want to know? Can he anything be private? This, if he was watching this, he'd be saying, oh, you know, going on about my life, and they want us to know everything. You know, he'd be really, really yeah. complaining about it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just, just look at the way he reacted when somebody in the recent Q&A asked them to kiss. And it, it didn't have to be like a super, you know, a Derek <laughs> level of kissing, something that would satisfy yeah. Derek. But he treated it like they asked them to, to start making out and shit. Even though the funniest shit is that they kissed before on stream. Cat gave they him did. a kiss on the cheek and he gave her like the 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 greasiest smile possible. Let me see if yeah. I can find it. I can pull it up. It was in 2018 during one of the <laughs> first times we got to see Cat IRL. <laughs> yeah. I get kissed what by my wife. <laughs> I get banged by my wife. Nice. I get laid. I get <laughs> laid by my wife. Yeah. I get laid by my wife. Uh, hello, I get oh, laid yeah. by my wife. Asshole. Because in, in school, he wasn't going to take any action on the ladies, but uh, now uh, against, it's, it's the wife no, it's against, against the, ladies. the ladies. Yeah, so Baxter would agree, though. Someone who gets laid by their wife is now like a passive person in the 
the sort of power arrangements. That's a bit of a strange one for someone yeah. else's control, isn't it? He's the receiver, not the batter. Yeah. Oh, he's always been the receiver. Let me tell you, he loves receiving. <laughs> yeah. So I'm uh, gonna watch you give him a kiss. I can actually, masculine guys. I can do a little bit Six better eight. than just showing you the photo. I'll just show you the clip, and you guys. Think, oh yeah. Let's see what you guys think about oh. this. Oh, let's go. Video. Oh. I um, I agree. Just gamer John did a twenty-five bit series. Is Phil love you? Would you give Phil a kiss on the cheek for everyone on stream? Would you do that? Look at that! Look at that! But she does not want to do that. Intense. I didn't promise you that. To. It's up to you if you want to. Don't feel pressure. You intense. You give a new kiss on the cheek. Sparks are flying. Look at this. There we go. Nice. <laughs> Look, Look at, that, at face. that! Oh my God, that face, dude! Yep. I can't. <laughs> we had that ready. <laughs> I've made that analogy before, but I think it's very good. I'll do it again. It's like when you're in high school and you just started high school, and one of your nerdier friends gets a girlfriend for the first time. That's how they act. This is the the whole yeah. embodiment of it. Uh huh. She's mine. Check this out. The... Check this out, guys. One button dash to dollars. It looked like Phil snapped away. Go back, Meerkat. It looked like Philip kind of snapped away too. Look at this. He kind of is like, all right, I'm had enough. Do go back a little it's bit. It's up to you if you want to. Don't feel pressure. He's just asking would you give him a kiss on the cheek. Would you? Would you? Would you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, never mind. I'll just answer too much. Um, fine. Still, I... Maybe it's because they're on camera. But when you're first in a relationship, aren't you quite like tactile with the other person? And don't you think like you know, ruffle their hand through their hair? And you know, it's nice to have your arm around them. Um, and in this case, they're just like like keep space between me. Like put the pillow between us if you can, because I don't really want to sort of touch <laughs> you with my arm. No, it's just not right. Dude, that's middle school. That's where that stop. It started with me and ended with me in middle school. And you got a girlfriend like, hey, you want to kind of be my girlfriend? And like last two weeks, you know. That's what that, that was 12, though. I wasn't watching Lion King. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, Vikes. ALT praying he jerked away because he still loves cat. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> no cat to love here. Anyways, I, I'm a cat before, reporter. We, before we all start making out right here on stream, yes, uh, shall please. we move on to the next message? Uh, one more okay. shout out, then we can get to it. Rodrigo says, "What I gather from the Asterian saga is that Phil's an idiot that tries to play a D D game like it was Skyrim. Nothing wrong there. Nothing no. wrong there. He th he wants every game like Skyrim. You know Bethesda, how they dumbed it down to be the easiest fucking game of all time. That's what he wants. That's how he plays it. Yeah. There you go. Do thing, give me thing. Oh, go here, get this, kill that, get get item. End of story. Seems sound good." Sounds good. Uh, next message we have is from Samurais from six days ago. What's going on, guys? Samurais here. And uh, I just wanted to come on here and say thanks for all the support on my Chicken in the Ring entry. Not just the host, but the chat as well. I saw a lot of very supportive, very positive uh, comments in there when my song had debuted. But uh, I will say, when nobody wanted to speak up about it at the end of it, I was getting the feeling that you guys really didn't like it. But uh, it seemed like y'all enjoyed it, and I, I just really appreciate that. So just wanted to come on here and say thanks for that. You guys have a great stream. Hey, Hell up. yeah. Yeah, man. Big ups. That was a good tune. I'll put it in chat right now. The hype going. Samurai's in the house. Hell yeah. Uh, next, we have Mr. Boris Rue, another Chikin contestant. And they got a message for us. Hello there, being said, this is Mr. Boris Drew from the house, from the Eastern style, and, uh, and a new contester <laughs> for the King of the Ring. So big ups for setting up this incredible show. I mean, LT, man, you're getting old. You, you forgot to play the intro, but it was so dope. And you uh, played yeah. it like after fifth song. Uh -huh. Good job, good job, man. Well, anyway, okay. first I want to apologize for the echo in my room. Uh, I, you know, I, I bought a new flat to support for my family and, uh, uh, my, me and my soul and my PC, uh, we're a big family, but the previous owner didn't tell me about this fact, what a douchebag. <laughs> so I, I don't have any paintings or stuff like that. So I first recorded a song called Sweet Hogan of Mine. And oh. then I realized that Steve wouldn't be there. Which she was in the end, but you played me at the, as a third song. So uh, that was kind of a good move because then I imagine you need a more heart and a soul 
to put in that song. And then I imagine the Billy Mac from the Love is All Around Us. I mean, you got to watch the clip because that's exactly what I did. I, I mean, I maybe will do a video, but I wasn't drunk. But this is what I imagined that when DSP would go in the studio, he was just fuck it and yeah, that was <laughs> and it. Cuts off. <laughs> yeah. Because Boris Rue, legend. I got to link to put this on. Yeah. I was uh-huh. just getting, I was just getting lost in the, and then it cut off. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, next we have Farmless. Let's hear what Farmless. Hey there, guys. Uh, just finished listening to King of the Ring, and it's blatantly obvious now that like if. Phil lent into a lot of the memes surrounding him, like some of the songs that mentioned uh, the spoon meme, like were great. And I just find it bizarre how he pushes out all these weird little quirky moments. Yet you are not allowed to bring anything like that up. You're not allowed fun in this chat. You're not allowed to reference anything that he said, like in a not a negative, but like in a humorous kind of way. It's so strange that his chat is so sterile, yet you've got so many people just creating really (laughs) entertaining content based off the dumb stuff that he said, and all of it is being ignored. It's weird, but no. Uh, Shout out to everybody that uh, made everything for King of the Ring, and thank you guys for hosting it. It was an absolute blast. See you all later. Can I, yeah, yeah. I jump in straight away on that? Because I completely Please. agree, right? Film is a meme, Phil's a meme generator. Like, and if you're an on, online person and you can create memes, that's incredibly powerful. Even if, like, you don't create them, you don't get to choose it. They just happen, yeah. don't they? Yeah. So, like, and when you think about it, like, that being, uh, sorry, that being said, The King of the Ring, um, there was a load of songs that featured the shopping bags. I was amazed at how um, much representation the shopping bags had in people's minds and in their energy. So, uh, like, the meme generation just happens, and he just absolutely sacrifices something that could be, uh, abs- like, could boy his stream along. It could make things, like, he creates his own ones, and it's a, a picture of a chair that's empty. Like, it's not acceptable to give up the good for the... Yeah, I completely agree with that message, yeah. Yeah, you also had something you wanted to share with everybody. Now I got you enhanced up on the screen so we can show it. Oh, yeah, bring, show it, show me. it. Me? Yeah. yeah. You want me to do that already? Yeah. Okay. okay, so I've got this from the Daily Star. <laughs> this is actually from the British News, right? Anyone yeah, Daily Star is legit, right? Real quick, just yeah. for American-style listeners. Daily Star is like a big newspaper, right? Like news shit. Yeah, it's like proper on the new shelves. It's one of the main... Uh, this is obviously yeah. from 20, uh, 2019. It was updated in 2019. It was from 2016. It, I'll read it to you just quickly. YouTube user, user, accidentally streams solo sex session to thousands of people. An embarrassed <laughs> man felt awful after discovering he'd broadcast a video of himself masturbating online. There's the video. And uh, it says... <laughs> The 30-year-old video game addict known online as DSP Gaming <laughs> on YouTube. That's not true. That's slander. Come on. Come on. He, doesn't like, he doesn't like video well, games. This next bit slander. He's famous for his videos showing off his gaming skills. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's wow. it. I'm sending a letter. They're lying a lot of times there. Dude. The, the videos were immensely popular worldwide with him amassing 368 million views and gaining 186,000 subscribers since he started the channel six years ago. But... After a terrible technical hitch, now he's known for something else. On a short break from gaming online, Philip Burnell decided to enjoy playing a different game with himself. There's the picture. <laughs> <laughs> the picture Some good says, fucking writing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The picture says, red-handed, the man accidentally left the camera running. <laughs> That's underneath it. And then we've red-handed? Got, uh, <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, he left the camera streaming during his X-rated session. In the video, edited here, as it's too shocking for readers, the American was seen staring at the ceiling before closing his eyes. But midway through, he realised the microphone was recording and stopped. He said, what's up, everyone? Hello, hello, and welcome. And worse still, he realised the whole scene was filmed. Bashful, he says. Oh, the camera's on. The camera's been on the whole time, huh? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's pretty good, man. I like oh, no, the way the, There is one final. There is one final. Actually, there is one final. Uh, this, well, oh, it says, not knowing, not knowing whether to admit it or play it cool, he settles with a sheepish hello. It's possible that viewers were thinking more about goodbye at that point. He's in good company, though. The incident is sorry. The incident is similar to the time that John Barrowman accidentally broadcast his husband's huge penis online. <laughs> <laughs> it is very similar to that. Similar actually. to that. 
So yeah, there you go. That was in the Daily Star, big national mainstream UK press. Um, <laughs> YouTube user, embarrassed man. <laughs> Hot red-handed. Make me small now again, please. <laughs> Solo sex session. I love that. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Um, in, in other news, uh, WWE Champions news, if you don't mind. Oh, uh, yeah, Phillip, I love that. Philip has taken the number one spot in his faction, so mm. big ups to that. Mm. He is now the number one rated mem- strongest member of uh, the Sons of SmackDown, so big ups, dude. That's amazing. C- congratulations on that. I mean, that's a huge honor. Uh, it does, unfortunately, if you guys want to replicate that, it does take logging into your account. Um, how many times exactly here? Hang on. It takes you logging to your account 2,241 consecutive days, though. <laughs> and uh, also the time played. You have to play for 2,596 days. So big ups, <laughs> dude. That's how his all lifetime days played. And the consecutive login streak is 2,241. So big ups. That was commitment. That's amazing. Yeah. That's so, definitely yeah. commitment. Uh, even though you, uh-huh. you got to consider he's, he's not playing it 24-7. So it, that's not his no. entire, like, play hours. But... The no, dedication no, no. alone to like log into it every single day is something else. In 30 days, his win rate is exactly 99%. So that's like, it seems like a fun game. Very wow, cool. Got oh. better. Sure. <laughs> it's, it's, it, I, I can only think of a few things that I do every single day. So <laughs> that you do. Oh, I was going to say that you have a 99% win rate with. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty good at brushing my teeth. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sometimes right. you might fail, break the brush or something. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, but still, yeah, his total win rate all time, that is for all of the 2,596 days, is 98.4%. So congratulations. Can't you pay just to replay the match if you don't win? Well, let's not get into the details, but yes. <laughs> if yeah. you have enough money, you can win. <laughs> That's is the bottom possi- line. Uh, while I'm on here, I might as well get some of my weirder theories out when they come up. Uh, is there a possibility Please? that this could be sold on the third-party market, like you sell Warcraft accounts, and that this could be in some way valuable, and that someone might just pay him for the whole account and he sees it as some sort of investment? We need to get TJ Gamebox to confirm that, but I believe that has been said no on that. that the oh. correct answer is no on that. It's not like World of Warcraft where you can transfer accounts. It's a link to your phone. Oh, yeah, yes. everyone's saying no in the chat, so and, I believe that. And also, yeah. according to him himself, that account is linked to his Apple account, so he would have to, I guess, sell the whole thing if he yes. wanted to make that happen. <laughs> so, yep. It's a shame. Yeah, uh, no up, cashing in. Up next, again, we have Phil Ip Burn L. Oh, oh hello, hmm. Phil. Uh, hello, is the mic on? Oh, it is. Hello, ALT and Meerkat and whatever other fucking idiots you've got over there this week. DSP here. I listened to your stupid music show, all right? It was the dumbest shit I've ever heard. You were implying <laughs> that I have no fans. You were implying that my, mo- my wife is fat. You were implying that <laughs> I am just begging for money constantly. Well, you know what? The joke's on you, motherfuckers. All those stupid songs do is send more people to my channel to check out my content. And when they do, they'll see that. I'm just a chill guy who likes to relax and have fun and relaxing time with my viewers. And then, you know, uh, they'll see that you are the ones with a fat ma- um, wife, LT. <laughs> you can kiss my ass. Meerkat, my butt can fart a better tune than you ever sang. All right, Ooh. enjoy your little show. You fucking mouth drooling idiots. And keep the name Dark Side Phil out of your worthless mouths. Oh, hold on a second. Hey, honey, sweetie, you there? You done with my laundry yet? <laughs> well, look, in my defense, his ass yes. has been producing way more than I've been. So. Oh, definitely. True. Absolutely. I, 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 my, you know, he said there's a point where the artificial intelligence Phil will be able to do his stream for him because all he yeah. does is, like, yes. you know, it's, there's the schedule, there's the this, there's complain about this thing. But actually, the artificial intelligence Phil going on a rant is also quite good as well. So maybe yeah. the, when AI actually analyzes what he does, it won't just be the boring, what we assume to be like, you know, the schedule and the, the Formula X stuff. Maybe AI will just go on mad rants about stuff. <laughs> and, uh... Dude, that's what I'm telling you. Okay, this is steal this idea because I, I, I would love to do this, but I'm sure I don't, you know, don't have the ability or time to make it happen. But what I want to do in the future is set up a uh, light side fill or whatever you want to call it, you know, the positive style fill. And what it does, it will watch the DSP stream, but just flip what it says in positive ways. Right, so all it does is it gets what Philip says and then says it in a positive way. So, for example, if he says like "fuck you, dude, get out of here," you fucking bullshit, get out of here. I was like, "All right, thanks so much for your comment. I really appreciate that." And like that's how it'll work. So, like if you want a positive VSP, it's right there at, in real time. You know, it might have a little delay because it has to go through the AI system. 
but that that would be a way and it's not even it can't be against tos is it it's a, its own thing it's <laughs> that's what i want to have happen do they have shark tank in america oh yeah yeah we have shark tank. Yeah. yeah so yeah. take it to shark tank and offer them want 300 grand for this and you can keep 100 percent of the business all i want is the money you can just keep it <laughs> I long, like, I long for the yeah. day when the when an AI comes out that makes DSPs pre streams obsolete, and then it even gets itself into drama. And like, okay, so last time what I said <laughs> on that stream was actually not what I meant, what I yeah. meant to say. And then it gets banned again, and then it goes on kick and does a new account, and then starts streaming <laughs> on there. And it's like it's a never ending repeating cycle. And let's do uh, it, dude. Come on, who whoever's interested, let's make it happen. Come on. Have, instead of begging, he'll say like, you know. If you want to donate to the stream, we're sending it to these charities, you know. He, yeah, true. he does beg, but it'll be like for charity always, you know, like, oh yeah, thanks so much for your support, guys. I really love it. If you want to support the charity, here you go. Uh, you know, whenever he talks about money, we'll talk about like, I don't know, good news <laughs> happening around the world. I don't know, something like that, you know. I can't, I can't wait to see it say error, error, error does not compute. <laughs> <laughs> Never leaves. When Phil goes to like the bathroom, then it'll do like extra content. Like, oh, real quick, I got five minutes. I'll play a quick level of uh, Mega Man Three for you guys. You know, here well, it is. Check this out, though. Right, right. Is it? I'm not a conspiracy theorist, right? But you know, the different yeah. trousers of time. Like, if you go on, like, you know, could have taken this choice, and there's different universes, yeah, yeah and multiverses. Like, so in another world, like Hitler didn't go mad and do all that bad stuff in the war, and like life okay. was nice. And there's the dark side. Phil lives there, and he is nice, and things are going well. And we just live in the shit world. With the shit dark side, Phil. And I, we have to put up with it. So. <laughs> okay, I'm down. That's a big Theo theory. <laughs> it's also uh, theoretically possible. So let's. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Theoretically. Yeah. And you know <laughs> that uh, Neuralink is being developed right now. Apparently, they got a person using it and it's, it's yes. making new strides in development. So at some point, we might even have like a cybernetically enhanced DSP. Imagine. <laughs> <laughs> I just think he'd let someone drill his brain. <laughs> They'd have to find it. He won't let people do surgery on his back. He's letting people go in his fucking brain. Yeah. He's scared of that surgery. He doesn't even want to spray something in his nose to fix his post nasal drip. He would like yes. to he would prefer like eating his snot for the rest of his life. So that, that yes. tells you all you need to know. Three thousand right. years in the future, everybody has their brains attached to the matrix, and Dark Side Phil is just adopting direct capture. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, shout out to Frozen Flame. He's up next. Oh, well, I got to turn your mic on, Frozen Flame. Anytime now. You got to refresh, Meerkat. I got to refresh. Frozen Flame didn't put his mic on. Here we go. Hey, that being said, this is Frozen Flame. Um, with Phil talking a ah, lot Frozen Flame. about how he's different than other content creators, it just reminds me of a picture I've seen, and other people may recognize what I'm describing is a picture of a bunch of forks and one of the forks the prongs on it are like bent and broken in all these directions and the caption just says just because you're unique doesn't mean you're useful and i think that kind of sums up phil pretty well because he's so focused on oh i'm different i i do something different than what everybody else does but he doesn't realize yep. that being different doesn't mean you have something to offer like Phil just strikes me as the type of guy where if he was a car manufacturer, he would not include things like seat belts because he wants to be different. And that's his only criteria. And he just kind of tunnel visions himself. Like, like everyone always says, he pigmatizes himself into thinking his course of action is the one true course of action and fuck every other kind of option he may have. So yeah, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, big ups. Big ups, Frozen Flame. Nice message. You get the picture up there, Meerkat, of the yep, uh, yep. meme he's talking about. So yeah, Phil has when you don't have any talent or kind of thing to back to 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 like show as your current skills or reasons people to follow you. What you have to do is go to the past, right? Just like Rico and uh, Napoleon Dynamite. I could have went pro. I was great in football. You go back to your history. So what does he do? He talks about the five, fifth, one hundred thousand videos he put on YouTube, which is not an accomplishment, by the way. Activity is not achievement. Same thing. And he also says, I do everything differently. Differently is not cool, as Frozen Flame points out. Differently is not always a positive either. <laughs> you know? And the third one is, uh, in, in a, it kind of goes in line with the different thing, is I don't have sponsors, guys, so, so I, don't, I don't shill anything. I can do what I want to do. But he just leaves out conveniently that because he doesn't choose to do those things, which, to be very fair here, he couldn't get those anymore anyway. 
But because he doesn't do those things, he actually gets a, a, a proactive choice he made so he can stay true to himself at the low cost of begging you every few hours for money. And that's a good trade, right? Sound yeah. good? It, it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, he, he uses that same line of reasoning to justify right. people disliking him by saying, they mm. just hate me because I'm real. Well, that, yeah. that's just admitting that you're naturally dislikable then. And maybe you should try harder for people not to hate you as much because like, it's, it's not a very good thing if people hate you. If people almost unanimously, when you look at you know, the, the ratio between people that like him and people that hate him, if they almost unanimously hate you, that, that might just be your problem. As as uh, cigar, go ahead, go super cover. Yeah, ahead. so um, Phil loves things that are un unique. Like that's like the best thing ever. A video game. It's like if it's not unique, it's bad. So it must therefore be good if it's unique. Um, we're all unique by merit of being born, because we are all unique. So it's quite a low bar yeah. to hit. But um, yeah, and then the other thing is meaningful. Like he talks about meaningful a lot, doesn't he? And I think that the sort of unwritten contract as a content creator is that you're going to create some sort of value in the content it could just be entertainment that's fair enough but like yeah. you do something you add something especially when you do react stuff like phil has now started to do um you pause you add your bit you know you create some value and if the audience finds that there's something valuable to them then they might support it watch it more share it and stuff like that that's the sort of basic premise um but i just think phil doesn't want to or hasn't got anything of value to offer so like playing video games might have been this is a really weird one as well because when he first started i thought no one's going to want to watch people play video games on youtube like yeah. like it, we, i liked playing the games like this was across the board as well for me and i'm surprised that the way it took off and i now watch all the people playing the games and play them myself but i used to like playing the games on the sofa you know i used to like passing the controller when's it my go so i thought the idea of watching someone else was the bit why are you waiting for your go um, so I think Phil was really lucky to sort of manage to make a go of that. But we've got over that now on the internet, haven't we? <laughs> I, you know, we've seen people playing a video game for a bit. So um, he, he needs to up his game and like find something of value to offer. And I think in himself, he tries to pretend that it's some sort of, um, I've been here a long time, therefore I've been on YouTube a long time. So I'm like some old hand like PewDiePie and I can talk from the past and, you know, I've got all this experience maybe. But, you know, it's not worth much to the modern audience, is it? Yeah. They're my feelings. Yeah. And yeah. just because you did something a long time doesn't mean you're allowed that this gives you, oh, now I can do that forever because I did mm. a long time, right? Cool. <laughs> That's yeah. not how it works yeah. in life. But it's so difficult for him because when you're when you're as disagreeable as DSP is and you show so much antagonism, he has to find something that um that gives them that, that drives him forward and gives them the power to continue and it's it's difficult for him because other people have tell have to tell him what he is or how he behaves or how he has to behave and other people tell him oh you know what that one message where that one guy told him oh god dude i was in the hospital and i watched your videos while i was in the hospital that was so meaningful and then okay i guess i'm meaningful now so <laughs> what i provide to you is now meaning but i wholeheartedly agree with that that message and it's, he, that's a great point i mean i mean and, and the best thing I can say about this, if I if I get uh, the quote back together, is um, if you live by the acceptance of other people, you die by their rejection, and that's pretty much Ooh, DSP. Nice. There's another couple of like weird points about it. Sam made a really great video about how. Uh, Phil could improve his content. Um, and I think Phil recently has actually been listening. With the suggestion box is a cover for listening to detractors and actually taking on board what detractors have been saying, I think. Yes. Um, and so, like, it's a weird one, but I think uh, he has, um, like, oh, the cat's annoying me now. Sorry, he was distracting me. Um, like, uh, he has uh, this idea about this meaningful, and he's doing this meaningful content. He offers no value. Um, but uh actually i've lost my train of thought i'm sorry <laughs> cat spray him quick yeah. the water bottle spray well, his ass pick i'll pick up the cat <laughs> number one priority now apparently so there we go we'll get steve no, in the dead but, moment yeah uh real quick just it's phil's disagreeability i put it on twitter but i just want to put it on the show too because uh just to just to uh just to document oh no, wait I, I, train of thought came back oh, right go, ahead, go on, please back yeah, on the rails okay, okay so um claws he... back <laughs> go ahead don't forget it again <laughs> Are you pressurizing me? No, I can't oh, piss. God. <laughs> um, that, uh, so it's this disagreeability um, 
And yeah, so it's what the other people... Okay, so Phil's trying to make sure that he runs his stream by a very small group of people who are in the room. And those people are irrelevant because it's the people who are not watching that he needs to appeal to. People might come in and they might leave and they're the people that he needs to grab hold of. But by yeah. listening to whatever Derich, Jade and whoever votes on his poll or whatever, that's completely irrelevant at this point because that's driven him into a very small hole. And if he keeps listening to those people, they're going to narrow and narrow and narrow his audience until it's just a small group of people who just get one-on-one -on -one with Phil. And he might as well just do it over Zoom. So I, <laughs> really, I think that he's, he's making this that's huge mistake. That's what he's mistake. doing now. Yeah, yeah, that's what he's that, doing now. If you yeah, listen to Ice Cream, he is talking to Jade and Derek, and that is yeah. the end of the list. Or yelling at other people that he can't tell if they're fans or not because uh, they're all fucking LARPers. So he should that's not be listening is. to like it's it, like all this suggestion box stuff and like you know I'm doing what you ask me and there's like the people want this and they tip on that irrelevant. Do something to bring in the other people who aren't watching because that's who you need to appeal to because that's how you grow your streams, isn't it? Like that, that's danger. Yeah. That's danger. That's the danger, scary part for 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 Philip is new people. And they can't even talk until twenty four hours later. So and, and he is, and he assumes that it's a new game brings in new people, but he doesn't realize that God, people yes. that play games watch streamers that play games, and it's about personality and like he could reach new audiences in different ways, but then he has to also keep them, I suppose. So maybe it's a losing battle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just real quick about Phil's uh, dislikability, I guess is that's a word in two thousand seven. Uh, I found from the SRK forums. <laughs> uh, there's a tournament Cigar Bob was putting on. It was a team tournament. And Philip says, well, I'm just going solo, guys. I don't have a partner. And Philip then responds with, this tournament is pretty stupid then. There's no East Coast players in this game. Cigar Bob's response is one of my favorites. This is 2007. So just to be clear, we're a, we're a full six years before Evil AJ uh, decides to re That's your cat. Re record a video. That's my cat. Yes, he heard yours. Uh, <laughs> Cigar Bob's response was... Um, Phil, this is a team tourney. There's nothing stupid about it. You have five months to find someone to play with. If you can't do that, then you need to look at yourself and ask why people don't want to play with you. 2007. Beautiful cigar, Bob. And But remember, guys, it's all because they were jealous of a YouTube account he didn't even have yet. So, cool. Yeah.